Let's create a new virtual machine using VirtualBox 7. I'm going to go to where it says new, and I'll type in a name. It's going to be a 2022 server. And under the folder, you can change that location or just go ahead and leave it as is. I'm going to leave it as is, and then I'm going to choose an ISO file. This would be something you download from Microsoft or whatever other location if you're using Linux or other operating system. Just go to that vendor site. Now the option here is to continue on, but I want to do a regular installation, the type of installation where I choose how much RAM and other things like that that go into it. If I want to do an unattended installation, then I could have just clicked continue. So there's the first option, which is the amount of RAM. Now if I go into my task manager, I can see how much RAM I have available, then I'll know how much I should assign. So I've got 15 gigs, only two and a half are being used right now, or 16 gigs, I should say. So I could use a lot more RAM than that. So I'm going to choose, we'll say around six gigs. And the processors, I've got four processors on this particular CPU, so I'll go choose uh, all four of those. Click Next. And now I can choose the size of the disk. Since it's a server, I'm going to go a little bit bigger. I'll say 75 gigabytes, but you can go whatever size you'd like. Now, if you choose the pre-allocate full size, what that's going to do, instead of using a dynamic disk, it's going to use more of a static disk where it uses all 75 gigabytes at once. And that's that does make the operating system run faster. However, it uses up all the storage, whether you need it or not. And if you're running low on storage, then you may not want to choose that. Most of the time, dynamic disks, which fills up as you need it, is perfectly good. Now, if you have an existing virtual hard disk file, you can choose that. I do don't. So I'll go ahead and choose the create one now and click next and finish. And now my virtual machine has been created, but nothing's been installed yet. So now what I need to do is to choose to start it up. I'll just choose a normal start. And something new in version 7 is if you look on the right hand side, you'll see that it's trying to power up the virtual machine. And if it has any errors, then you're going to go see those errors at that time. So I didn't see any errors. It says it's running. And now the virtual machine is showing up that it is starting. I'm going to choose to capture the hardware that goes along with it, such as the mouse and keyboard. And they used to have this at the top. Now it's off to the right. I can just go ahead and click the X's and close those. You don't need those open. Click Next and Install Now. Now you may be prompted to put in a key for installation. It just depends on the operating system that you're installing. And we can see that it gives me the option for Data Center. And you want to choose the Desktop Experience unless you want just a command prompt to show up. And I'll click Next. I'll choose to accept the license, choose a custom installation since this is the first time it's not an upgrade, it's a new install. And now you can see the installation has begun. If you get any kind of error when this starts up saying VTX is not enabled, that means the virtualization is not enabled in the BIOS or the UEFI. So when you start up your computer, press the button that says for startup, press delete or F1 or F2, and then you'll get into the startup and then look under CPU and then make sure you enable virtualization or in some cases it says enable VTX. Either way, that will enable virtualization and then you'll be able to go ahead and do this installation. And the installation is now complete. One thing to keep in mind is the that VirtualBox is a free product, not really designed to be used for production purposes, great for learning purposes, and uh, it's great for school, colleges, high school, things like that. But there's still a lot of bugs in it, so it's not the best idea to use it where you have to be in production and you're relying on it as a business tool. So that is how we install the operating system onto VirtualBox.